Welcome to Tabletop Topics. I'm your host, Jeff. And of course, Jeff. Guys, if you want to catch and watch our ugly mugs on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Deezer, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and now YouTube Music. We also have our YouTube channel, One Word, Tabletop Topics, our Triple T's Clips channel, and our TikTok. If you click on the link, it'll take you directly to the episodes. And of course, we have timestamps so you can navigate throughout. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and of course, leave us a comment. Again, guys, thank you again for joining us at the Tabletop. Let's jump right into it. And I know you're going to ask me about my voice. <laughs> yeah, uh, boy, your voice been crackling all day. That was weird. I'm like... No, no, but but um, we just had a we just had a brief uh, call uh, in with Walter, um, Jimmy's cousin, which he will be coming on soon. Um, but right. no, I don't. It, it was normal all day. It was normal all day. I think it's because I was laughing so much, consistently talking and laughing so much. Laughing mess up your voice. Yeah, yeah it's like when you're it's like when you're watching it's like when you're watching a show and you get excited or an anime or something like that. And you oh. start screaming out, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and then you wake up the next morning. You're like, he went so much I didn't He went so much I sex. Oh, man. Yeah. No, I'm dead. I'm dead. If you hear me have a raspy, cool voice, that's because uh, Move. <laughs> that's, Move. That's, that's, uh, that's the reason why. But, um, no, no, it's like a um, uh, certain thing. Uh, I, I know that something happened that... Uh, at work today that I wanted to discuss with you and you probably might have a different take on this so I want to get your perspective on it so I was having this conversation with an associate and she kind of basically is saying like uh, the, the person that she's with is toxic mm -hmm. but she's also toxic too so I asked her like what kind of toxic traits do you have and she's like well I manipulate people with my emotions but he also makes me feel bad for doing certain things and I said then why would you get back with him <laughs> So guilt tripping, gaslighting, exactly. And manipulation. So basically, so and both you of what? Emotions. And you're like, what the fuck? Like Damn. both of you, th th that's like the worst thing that both of you guys can ever do because Oof. that doesn't help either of you. And on top of that, you guys broke up the first time and went back again. On again and off again, relationships never work because if it obviously something happened the first time that made you argue or get whatever, right. then it's gonna happen the second time. Right. And um, they they. It, it, Another associate comes in and kind of says, well, yeah, my boyfriend's like that, too. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Like, h how so? Like, why is why is said person or your boyfriend like that? And she's like, well, his dad wasn't there. He had his stepdad, and his stepdad was verbally and physically abusive. And then his mom was emotionally manipulative. So he kind of does the same thing to me. And then the first one's like, has an epiphany, like, oh, shit. Jeff wasn't lying. <laughs> like, yes. So you have to hear from another woman in order to understand what I was saying. And <laughs> I know, right? Oh, man. No, I feel that. I feel that. Right? Like, wow. I need. No, I feel that. I can't even say it. That's tough. <laughs> don't, don't try to hit any octaves over, I don't know, a B flat, Jeff. I probably have to just, like, squeeze my balls and it'll be like, <laughs> no. Please don't. No. You won't. No. <laughs> no, bro. That's, oh, a, that's, that's some different type of content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna be here for that. Yeah. But go ahead. No, no, no. So, so she was basically, so she was basically saying, so she was basically saying um, that he is like that because he didn't have a, a he was it was a single mom, the stepdad wasn't really in the picture, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. I say is that why he's like a very emotional person because he didn't have a father figure around? And she basically said yes and no, and then. I basically said, because I said, all right, without even telling her anything, I said, from the two years that you've known me, how would you describe me? Just based off of what you've seen, what you've known, the way I am around people. Who, you, me? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So, uh, the person. Because right. okay. I worked at the old store before it shut down because uh -huh. of the hurricane and all uh -huh. that stuff like that. Uh -huh. um, and then I said... From what it, and of course the second associate they're, they're both women by the way the second associate was standing there because they're kind of bouncing off each other and I said from the two years that you've known me in the workplace wh what do you what do you know what do you see well you have a charismatic personality a little bit of assertive, assertive dominance it's not like it's aggressive but you, you you're, you're sure about yourself um, 
she's like you like to pry into people's information and i said well not really i just say what's going on and you guys tell me she's like yeah that's true and i said i don't do nothing you guys just start telling me everything <laughs> i just say what's going on and then you guys feel the comfortability to be able to express mm -hmm. how you really feel mm -hmm. about whatever is going on in your personal life and that's what basically i was i was telling her i said all right based off of what you see so she was basically kind of describing certain character traits that you you've noticed in me and other people have noticed in me you're always happy mm -hmm. they're like the one thing they said that freaks them out is i'm always calm they've never seen me angry and i said would you want to see that <laughs> yeah why, why would you want to yeah, see, see that so they're like yeah you, you you always have like a a a stoic calmness to you like you're never angry and then of course um the other the other stock clerk um said well that's what i don't get either like i make everybody mad but for some reason i can't make you mad i said why would you want to see me why mad i said it's difficult to get me upset why is that an objective i don't know to upset someone. it's it's like it's it's like an innate i i have to see him why? angry i don't know oh. every person the, the reason why I asked her that question to go back yeah. is because she basically said, um, cause she, they were basically saying all guys are alike. And I basically said, that's not true. And then she started explaining the situation with her boyfriend. Yeah. And I said, okay, now describe me. Like, what do you see? Basically the whole single mother thing. What she didn't know is we were, we were was, raised, yeah, by a single we mom. were raised by a single right. mom. And then I said, now, based off of what you told me about my personality traits and how I'm at, I am how how my character is if I told you I was raised by a single mother would you believe me and she, that's when she's like well your single mother situation might have been different because of the dad I said well there was not really a dad in my life so how would you explain that he's like that's when she's like okay but in his situation it was like a stepdad but he wasn't in and out of the picture and he was uh, verbally and physically abusive I said I get that but at the same time, that really just goes to show you not every single mother house. You can't use yes, right your personal experience. You can't prescribe everyone's. How do I say this? You can't prescribe everyone's personality or their their demeanor or the way they behave. The way they behave based on your personal experience, right? Because your personal experience doesn't necessarily reflect the reality of the world. Right. So basically, I said okay now that you've told me all this do i represent any of those she's like no i said okay but i was raised by a single mother so she like i said again she tried to flip it to okay yeah you can't band-aid his shortcomings exactly based off of past traumas mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like he yeah. should be adult enough to communicate his shortcomings towards mm -hmm. you and then you both work on it no i completely together agree. i completely you know agree and not well, such and such happened to me, so I have the liberty to be an asshole. Or and that's what she was basically saying. She was basically grouping like, all no. men as, oh, all men are assholes. And I said, that's not true. You can't really do that. And then that's when she gave me the example of said person. And I'm like, well, then, that again, that doesn't reflect the reality of the entire world. I said, the guys that you choose are assholes. And they realize that for some reason... Um, and then that's when I was like, I see, this is what I understand about no offense to women, not all, but some. It's like you guys refuse to go after the bad boy, and then when they emotionally or mentally manipulate you. Wait, wait, wait. restate that again. You said you refuse to go after the bad boy? Oh, my bad. Yeah, re restate that again. When you guys refuse to go after, when you guys only choose, not refuse, when you guys only choose to go. Well, that's just a given. Yeah. Like, Bad boy or not, like, I just think in general the manip the mo emotional mo more, most women kind of gravitate gravitate towards, towards <clears throat> that. You don't have to be like a bad boy all the time or an asshole, mm -hmm. but like they just want they they understand that or they want to know that you have the capability of said right of <laughs> ex exuding that type of energy. Yeah, you see what I'm saying, mm -hmm. like. Not saying go all the way and just you know cheat on her, be bad. Blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, of course. Have her one like in your rotation and all that. But like, because I don't like to look at it as 
good guy, nice guy. And black and white. Bad it's, it's not just black and white. Because it's like I had that conversation with you the other day. The the guy who went crazy and just started, you know, going on rants on TikTok. Bashing people. Bashing women. Mm-hmm. You know, because he's the quote unquote nice guy. And in my mind, I'm like, you never live your life, never live your life expecting, you know, a reward for doing what is the right thing yeah. for being quote unquote nice. Nice guys don't, oh, I'm doing this because, you know, there's a reward at the end. Yeah. No, a woman is not obligated to want you or be with you just because you're nice. And that's what a lot of people fail to understand. No, I feel it. They're autonomous. The same way you have the choice to date a girl you find attractive or unattractive. Or not, or to not date a girl you don't find attractive. Unattractive, yeah. You see what I'm saying? She can have the greatest personality in the world, but mm-hmm. if you don't find her attractive, just because she's nice to you doesn't mean you're obligated to return that, that favor. That, that, that feeling, you know okay. what I'm saying? Like, and, and it's so tough for men to get that out their head. Mm-hmm. What's it's like... I'm doing all these nice things. I'm being everything she wants. Mm-hmm. Granted, it's in a weird, malicious way. <laughs> malicious, because, malicious compliance. Because it's set with a, 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 a an expectation, an expectation. A, 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 in result. Like right. you want to be rewarded right. for what you've done instead yeah, of that's, doing it that's, because it, you want to do it. Or right, because it's just the right thing to do. Yeah. Like not even because you want to. You should just know it's the right thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That there is no expectation that, you know. I'm going to I'm going to be in bed with you because of this. Yeah. You see what I'm like I done this. I gave you roses, I gave you right. chocolates. Now you can give me sex. Right. And it's like, no, it's not unless you unless it's a transactional situation, why would you expect that or thinking it's like a transactional situation where because I do these nice things, the end result is you give me attention, you give me sex, you give me love, you give me whatever right. the goal is, right. essentially. What I'm saying. So no, that, that's kind of that's kind of what happened at, at at the job, and I just I just wanted to her to elaborate on that because she gave a broad general statement of men, and not right. just that she assumed because of her man being in a single mother household situation. That's the reason why he's very emotional. He's she very, just applied, well, this is how men are in XYZ situation. Because that's then, what she's seen that's what it with is. the three years that Instead she's been. Instead of, you know, kind of honing down on this individual mm-hmm. and understanding the whole entirety of why they act the way they act. Exactly. And I said, all right, any of those character traits that you mentioned about me, I said... Okay, it, all those character traits that you mentioned in, in him, do you see them in me? And she's like, no. I said, well, exactly. That doesn't mean everybody is the same just because they're raised by a single mm-hmm. um, mother household. Mm-hmm. Yes, I might be an outlier. Yes, I might be different. Yes, I might um, have made myself and people around me successful because of my mentality and how I think. But you can't just presume that every person that is raised or every male that is raised but in a single mother household is gonna um, act or be or, or manipulate or treat everybody in such a manner that your boyfriend is doing to you. Cause she was even giving me example. She's like, I went out for a run and then I came home and she she's like, she's like, for some reason I was thirsty. So she got home, she's like, man, I'm thirsty. And then he came to her and said, well, because you forgot to, uh, he's like Sarah first, so uh, said first that you, you first you need a wusa, and then go take a shower, and then she's like, well, I'm thirsty, and he's like, well, you forgot to put water in the dog's bowl, so therefore you're not gonna drink water, because the dog had, was thirsty, so you're gonna go shower first. And then you're going to put the water in the dog's bowl. And then you can drink water. And she did it. What the fuck? That's nuts. And I'm like, you don't see what's wrong with that? Yeah. That's... Like, you really don't see what's wrong with that? And that's why I was like, why do you why do you, why do do you, you guys get with these type of men? And then when she got out the shower, she's like, now you have to calm your body down. And, and she's like, no, fuck you. I'm thirsty. So she went and drank the water. So she realized what was happening, and she snapped out of it and said, holy shit, he's manipulating me. 
I'm doing what he says, but then I'm like, fuck this. But then you're still in the relationship with that person. <sighs> I know. I know. I said, that's nuts. That's nuts. The toxicity in that shit, bro. That is uh-huh. nuts. Hey. I don't know. Hey, I'm like, I'm just a bystander. I'm listening to what you're saying. Uh-huh. To She's the one that's di- divulging all this. I didn't even ask her to go into details. She just uh-huh. was giving me an example of how he does it. Right. You see what I'm saying? And the fact that she's somewhat okay with, that's what's confusing me. So There's a lot of compounding things. Sometimes it's just the fear of leaving someone. I don't know how long they've been together, but like... Being alone. Being alone and then also losing all that time you've put in. And then on top of that, like, you might think... Some people just think, oh, this could be a normal part of a relationship. It's not. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But, like... I feel it. That really depends on... The said person. The person. You see what I'm saying? Like, what's your mindset going into the relationship? Mm -hmm. What are your... Like, you have to... I don't know if there were ever any boundaries established. Probably not. You see what I'm saying? (laughs) <laughs> like I don't like because at the beginning of the day like you're a human yeah you know mm-hmm. and if I was in a relationship with someone that's the first thing that I'm that's the first lens that I'm looking the boundaries what you're comfortable through. like you're, you're human and you deserve boundaries yeah I feel it. and you deserve respect and then after that we'll divulge into you know what the expectation is mm-hmm. from each other I don't know why people are so afraid of communicating do they just feel like that they have to be an expert like they should just wing it and then if they get it right then kudos you know what i'm saying because nine times out of ten you're gonna get it wrong because you're not a mind reader no one, one is a yeah mind reader. and and i would say one of the basis of a lot of relationships because i've noticed from the two examples of the two associates that they were giving me was well i think or i think he said this to this person or I think she said this to that person or I feel like she said this or I feel like she said that so basically they're just guessing right they don't know what the person said or did they're just assuming based off of how the person is reacting so right. they're they're blind to 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 knowing what actually is said or is actually being thought of because there's no communication they're just automatically saying that this is what they feel or this is what they think and this is what it is. So they're both angry at each other and they don't know why because there's no communication. Right. So it's very confusing when 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 people Oh, but I don't know, that's just weird activity right there. You're going left, she's going right. You're going to deny me water? That's weird. That's weird. That's at, at, at in the beginning like that's why I said at the, in the beginning yeah. you are a human. Yeah, I'm like the fuck? I'm thirsty. You're going to tell me to calm down, to go shower fill the dog bowl and then drink water get the fuck out of here See, that's a conversation in there but that's the thing but it's like do you f- are, are you what is how safe do you feel yeah you see what I'm saying like how safe I, do I don't know what it, I, this this is just surface level right. like I, I'm not in I'm right not, it, 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 there's a lot yeah there's a lot there's a lot and of nuance, into nuance into it. Right. so it's like I don't know what, it's deeper than that yes it is and you know she's, she's just divulging surface level there could be more shit to it he could be threatening her and, and, and I wouldn't know that so I don't know <clears throat> that's wild to me yes sir that's huh. wild to me. So that was my work day. <laughs> Man. I don't, ah, that's... That's weird, right? When that's she, when crazy. She said, when she said that, took the other stock clerk by, by surprise. She's like, what the fuck? If you want to get a drink of water, get a drink of water. What do you mean? You need to let your body cool off because... Here's how you know someone's a good person. See how they deal with animals. Yeah. See how they deal with animals. Because yes. if you hurt an animal, you will hurt a person. Yep. You will hurt a person. No, I agree. I agree. If you hurt an animal, if you do some weird punishment to your animal, like not feeding them or isolating them or keeping them outside or some shit, like, something's not clicking. Mm-hmm. Something's not clicking. Or it's like you don't realize that's a living, breathing entity. Of course. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I look at Bruce and I'm like, how can I hurt this fuck, fucking chunky Weird burrito looking burrito thing. laying out <laughs> on the, with his uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Leg. I just feel like 
but not everyone's coming at every situation in, in from in my aspect. yeah my point of view just mm-hmm. like looking at the multiple layers of something mm-hmm. you see what I'm saying like when I meet someone it's like in you know we start dating or we start talking I'm not looking at them like they're this infallible perfect person they're not you know what I'm saying I could notice their flaws and be like okay that's something I could live with I can compromise mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying we can talk about it da 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 like but if it's something egregious and, and that's where it comes from the beginning where it's like First thing, boundaries. Is, boundaries don't lie. Yes, boundaries don't. Lie. Those are number. Those are number right. ones and twos for me, man. Right. It, boundaries it, it, don't if lie. we if we establish a relationship with, of course, certain boundaries and, of course, not lying, then we're set. We're right. set because then that means I can trust you moving forward. Mm-hmm. But if you start off a relationship with deception, then, like you said, the lie will just eventually catch up, and um, all the truths will come mm-hmm. out, and then eventually it's up to you to make the decision whether right. you want to leave or not. Right. And of it, like I said, the universe works in mysterious ways, and it will fucking come out. Doesn't matter if you think that you're in control of your own universe or not, which you're no, not, because you manifested the lie. Exactly. You're you're speaking something that so is something's right. gonna manifest the truth, right. regardless you if you want it or not. Yeah. You can't go against the 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 logic of the universe if you're saying something that is not. It will self-correct. It will self-correct? Yes, it's always. Like, you're trying to manifest something that is not. Yes, I agree. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, that's tough. The yeah. universe is going to punish you. Yep, I agree. I agree. You're like, all right. Unless you do everything in your power to make that <laughs> lie true. That's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying? If the actions work. you are putting towards the lie uh-huh. do not help benefit the lie. Yeah. Because there's like a difference between me saying... I'm going to be successful while applying myself towards, or I'm going to be a programmer. Okay. And then I'm program. <laughs> I'm learning coding and da da da. I'm going mm. to school. You know, that's me putting in work to the correct manifestation. I feel it. To the correct objective. Yes, sir. But if you say something like, "Oh, I'm a full stack developer," but you what? You're doing DoorDash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Crash and burn. You know? Like, the, the, the work you're putting in doesn't amount to what you're trying to manifest. Yeah, for sure. I agree with that. You if you're saying? working towards that goal, that I mean, I, would, I still wouldn't say that until I have actually reached it. But... If you're working towards that goal, that's different. But if you're just saying it, and like you said, and you're just a DoorDash character... Right. It's like you're saying, I'm a millionaire, but I got zero in my bank account. Right. You see what I'm saying? (laughs) Or if you say, like, if you lie to your partner about something, I don't know, what, something your partner cares about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you lie to your partner about that, eventually your actions and the things that you've done within the lie, you see what I'm saying? Because you've already done something Mm -hmm. that, I guess you know manifested the lie but to go against that you have to i don't know manifest another lie lie i think people has have a false sense of control of their reality <sighs> Absolutely. and i think that's the biggest Absolutely. issue they think because in their mind it's never going to come out right. i'm going to continue to do it right. but they don't understand shit is happening behind the scenes right everything always comes out me, I'm, he's, he's I'm said the, something really, yeah. Everyone always thinks they're in control of their own reality, like they control yeah. their own lives. Like they, like if I lie, I know I'm gonna get away. With no, it. yeah, that's so weird to me. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. In every aspect of life, mm-hmm. we always feel that we're in control. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you could guide the energy towards a certain goal. Yep, something if, good. Something good. Mm-hmm. Or you know, and then, but when you guide it towards something negative, what always happens? Right, it, it fails. Right, because you're not truly in control. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, no, you you said something legit right there. No, that's facts. Because we always want to feel like we can control other people. We can control how we want someone to make us change. feel. Make them change. We can make them change. Yeah, and and nobody will change unless they. I always that's the advice I always give. 
especially when you have uh, a, a woman when I talk to a woman and they're like I want to change my boyfriend and I'm like you're never going to be able to change any a person if they don't want to change right because at that point because uh, uh, again a perfect example from the one with the manipulator she was basically saying that yeah when I see somebody broken I just start a relationship so I can try to change them and I said how long has it been she's like four years and I said have you changed them well he's changed a little I said no because he converts back to certain things that he used yeah. to do in term he is not changed right right so that it, it, it's things like that so it's like now you can't undo shit that's in someone's brain DNA you yeah. just build on top of it yep you know what I'm saying if you want to quote unquote undo someone's past trauma build b- better shut up don't try to unpack their past trauma yeah you know what I'm saying understand it but like don't try to what, what, what do you call it? Um, whatever. Don't try to undo what's already been done. Mm-hmm. Just build. It's like a timestamp. Right. Build better experiences and memories. To forget about the bad. Right. Ones. That yes. outweigh the past trauma. Exactly. And that's essentially what the goal is. Right. Because you want them to grow. Yeah. Not undo what has and made then, them them yes. now. You see what I'm saying? Because, because who they are now, that's that's because of that. Mm-hmm. You know, but if you want someone to truly change, m- make new experiences for them. Experiences, memories, all right. stuff like that. That yeah. outweigh the bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know oh, what I'm saying? I agree. I agree. Like, I always tell people who've been through, like, crazy <laughs> shit, you know, live with the intent to have a fulfilling life. And then when you look back, the dark times that you had are minuscule yeah. compared to the good shit you look forward to and work towards. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Instead of re- uh, 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 regressing back into who you who you were. Because when you regress, you don't move forward. You don't. Yeah. It, no one's saying forget, but sticking into, staying in it. Is Use a, that as a point of empathy. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Be an example for people who are in your situation. Mm-hmm. To move forward, become better, grow, da da da, yeah. set goals for themselves, you know, X Y Z. But it's like when you try to keep unpacking people's trauma, you're just re hurting them. Yeah. So in some case, like you're not really helping them, especially when you compare them to the person that gave them trauma. Right. That's even worse. Like, That's a worse situation too. But no, I I completely agree with you. I don't think um, unpacking it or trying to fix it helps because at the end of the day, if this is a relationship that you've never wanted, you've just wasted your young years on trying to fix something that you can never fix. Right. You see what I'm saying? So to me, that didn't make any sense. I'm not a therapist. Like that's that's not my job. Yeah, it's not. That's not my job. It's not. You know what I'm saying? I'll be there for you. We can build new memories. I can show you something different, but... I, I can't undo the psychological damage that you've went through. I feel it. And I shouldn't be a victim towards it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'll be there to support you. Well, like you said, that's the, the, that's the victim like. victim mentality. Right. You, you, you got to get out of that. that. That cannot be what your life is. Your life is more than just being a victim. Being a victim. So if you let that control your life, then you can mm-hmm. never move forward with it. Right. I completely If agree. you control... The only thing you control... In your entire life, going back to control, is the choices you make. It's the only control. Life, yeah. It's the only control. And everything is a choice. Yeah. Like Jeff loves to say, everything is a choice. Hey, man, I will... I that will, is the ultimate form I will of say accountability. Till, I will say it till the day I die. I mean, people, people, certain people will look at it as, well, did that person... Did that person deserve this to be happened to them or that to be happened to them? And as shit as that sounds is, well, why was that person in the situation in the first place? Right. No one ever goes back to what was that person doing in that situation? In the first well, no, there are some things that are out of your control. I understand that. Yeah. But, but the, the things that are in your control. Well, Jeff, I literally just told you, you are never in control. <laughs> 
The only thing you have control is the choices, choices you, you make. make. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so if I make a choice to go to Walgreens and then someone smashes into my car. That's uncontrollable. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I made the choice to go to Walgreens. Yes. But I was not in control of the situation that transpired. transpired. Me going to Walgreens. I feel it. But the choice that I have is what to do next if I didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel it. I feel it, man. If something tragic happens to me, I end up paralyzed or something like that. Mm -hmm. Everything after that, okay. how I feel, how I continue to move forward, my perspective on life, mm -hmm. how I recover from this, you know, X, Y, Z, is my choice. Is my choice. No, I feel it. I can choose to be insanely depressed mm -hmm. and think about every single thing that I, I used to be able to do. Or be miserable or want to kill yourself. Or right. All that stuff like that. Right. Or you can look at the positive things that you can do. Right. Forward. I still have so much time ahead of me. Yeah. I could be a madman and just believe, oh, yeah, you know, I'm paralyzed now. I'm 40 years. Pff, they'll have this figured Robotic out. Robotic legs. Right. They'll have this figured out. Because I'm alive and I have time. No, I feel it. You see what I'm saying? No, I agree. So, I wouldn't necessarily say, what were they doing? It's It didn't matter what they were doing. Mm -hmm. What did we say in the beginning? What was going to happen was always going, going to happen. happen. Regardless if you didn't Regardless want it, if you didn't want, want it, it to, happen. to happen. Which is why nobody has control of their own reality. Okay. Time exists before, ahead of us, and behind us. Yep. Your timeline is already set. Yeah. Whatever was supposed to happen will happen. Will happen Re was always going to regardless happen. Regardless of the direction that you take. Right. Turn. The only thing you're in control is the choices you make and how you respond. After. After. If, if you're still alive. If you're still alive. You see what I'm saying? No, I feel it. That's why I will never be like, oh, yeah, that's your fault. Sorry, my ADHD. ADHD. Yeah, that's why I'm always like, I will never be like, that's your fault. Mm -hmm. I'm always well, because like, the first thing that people always go to is, what were you doing there? Doesn't matter what I was doing there. If I went with the intention that my life and my dignity and myself was going to be preserved mm -hmm. and respected, yes, I wouldn't have made that choice. I feel it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we can never be like, oh, yeah, I'm going here to die. Oh, yeah, I'm going here to freaking get uh, 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 graped. I'm going here to, you know, be a victim of a mass shooting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No one ever goes, does anything or make a decision with the intent that I want a bad outcome. Yeah. Okay. But nobody thinks that far. They just, it, it's, it's. The first question, like I always say, is what? What were you? What were you doing? It doesn't matter what there. I was doing. Over yeah. Because at the end of the day, you are a human. Yeah. You deserve respect. Yep. You deserve dignity. Mm -hmm. You deserve your boundaries. I agree. But motherfuckers don't think that way. They're entitled. They believe they deserve something for putting something out in the world, no matter how minuscule it is. Mm -hmm. There always has to be a reward. That's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. I've never thought like that. That's crazy to me. And, and and it's weird and, and it's and the reason why I can say this is a fact and not based off of my own experiences is because every time um I do something nice for a person or just out of the kindness of my heart, the first thing they say is, What do you want? What do you want? Nothing. It's like it's ingrained in them. It's like, I wanna see you happy. I wanna see you be successful. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? That's what I want. I want the people around me to be happy and thrive and be successful. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything I can do to put you in that realm, I would do that. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, that's why, I, like, when, I don't know. It's just like, I don't know. When what? Like, when someone asked me to do <laughs> something for them, it's like when I was doing the database for Mom's Church or I was fixing their computers and yeah. laptops and stuff. They're like, oh, how much? Da, da, da. I was like, I don't freaking know. I just wanted to do this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys need it. You guys support my mom. You guys are an extension of my mom. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I just want to help. Mm -hmm. They're like, no, 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 we got to pay you. I'm just like... Do what you want. How much? Whatever. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. 
Now, if this was business, okay, yeah. That's, yeah, that's different. different. That's something we sit but down like, and discuss me right now. Helping someone, especially like older people who don't understand technology, technology. And, and stuff like that. Yeah. I know they're they're more at risk to getting scammed and, 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 and shit yeah. like that. So I, I go out of my way and help them, you know, especially in terms of like helping uh, them set up security systems mm-hmm. and, and things like that. I like to help them do, do that because. Anything that will improve their safety, that's going to improve their quality of life. Mm-hmm. And they might live a better life. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel it. So it's just like, I think about shit like that. How can what I do benefit everything? The broader humanity. Mm-hmm. That one person that I helped could help other people. Oh, yeah, I remember oh, yeah. this guy came in. Like, that's just how I think. Everything is exponential for me it's not transactional it's not transactional me doing something for someone else has a larger ripple than oh yeah give me ten dollars and i'll do this thing for Mm -hmm. you you know what i'm saying because now it's like you're not you're not what's uh, what's the word you're not motivated to understand what i'm doing or even understand the concept of me just doing something for you yeah that's how come you, when you hear the term pass it on it's like oh wow yeah well, that's what i want to do it's like um <laughs> i think you should leave i want 300 burgers 20 tacos 35 fries you what <laughs> and then he passed it on and then did a whole you oh uh, shit <laughs> Oh uh, shit and he's like you gotta let me go first that's you gotta let me go first lady <laughs> freaking I want. <laughs> I'm dead, and then he's waiting, and then, <laughs> and then he's waiting. The guy's like, "Oh, you ordered like four hundred dollars of the stuff," and then the lady behind him. <laughs> oh man, uh, she's oh, like, "Hell no, <laughs> hell no!" She pulls up. I want thirty-five fries, twenty thousand shakes. What the fuck? My God! Oh, that was hilarious. No, that was. I don't know, man. Yeah, I just feel like it's tough. Yeah. If everyone just kind of had a, I don't know, I don't know, but open mindset. Oh, it's it's weird, man. Non-robotic ideas. It's weird. Like think about. It's like how can you live when you set such rigid boundaries on what you're allowed to feel and think. Yeah. And do. No, I feel it, man. That's so tough. <clears throat> That's such a painful life because anything outside of that, you just. You self destruct. Mm-hmm. That's tough, man. That's tough. I would feel trapped and angry all the fucking time. Yeah, for sure. And it's and it's like um, and it's like when you when when you're again too like the book that I just got um, the four the four elements. It's just like learning how to control your emotions and your reality and your perspective on life, and just uh. I don't. Uh, people go. People are quick to react instead of actually think that. and thinking about what I would do. Instead of control your emotions, transfer your emotions into positive things. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like transfer it into po- like, like me. I always laugh. Laugh or tell I jokes laugh. or something like that. Like, like fine, think, right? Yeah. Like. Like any, I can turn any negative situation into a funny moment. Right. Any crying situation into a funny moment. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's how come I'm like, if I die, play stupid music at my funeral. Don't play something, something sad and depressing. Like I want people to laugh. Like every recording of me that we have on here. I'd, I'd tell them the story of how clumsy you are when it comes to pizzas. This man's pizza uh, enemy yeah. number one. It's a phenomenon, man. It's, for some it's, reason, it's, it's, it's a, a, a man. It, it just—I don't know. Me and pizzas are <laughs> oh, friends. Man, right. So if I if we order it, I tell my brother to pick it up because for some reason he always wants to we'll fall. Be dropping pizzas left and right. He always <laughs> wants to fall out my hand. <laughs> but um, no, like I said, you just, like you, you, I I agree with you. Just always turn uh, your emotions into a um, something into positive. Something positive, whether um helping somebody else or making somebody laugh or like something that that's either positive to you or someone else yeah you see what i'm saying like if it's if it's a negative emotion fuel it through something that benefits you yeah. you know and, and that's as easy as you know working out yeah or doing art 
or listening to music, mm-hmm. making music, even if yeah. you're not good, you could end up developing a talent, channeling your emotions into something else. Things. Yeah. Into skills. Transferring your emotions into skills. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and that's one, that's one good way of really managing, you know, your emotions. Your emotions. You I see feel what I'm that. saying? Cuz it's like, ah. Uh, I don't know. It's a lot. No, yeah. It's a hey, lot. Hey, man. That's Life why it ain't takes time. Easy. Yeah. And I don't know time. shit. I still don't know shit. Me too. I'm still learning. You know? I'm still learning. I still don't know shit. There are some situations that I don't know how I would respond to them mm-hmm. if I were in them. I think I know. That's the part of me wanting to be in control. Mm-hmm. But, you know what I'm saying? But I can understand that I have the knowledge and the understanding of okay what is the right way to handle this situation and then i can be conscious enough aware enough that i know what choice i'm going to make yeah whether it's a bad choice i can fully 100 percent accept that that's the choice i'm going to make basically make yourself the main character that's crazy and egotistical as as that sounds yes that's because a lot again if you can if you can actually do what you were just saying then you just made yourself the main character. Be the hero in your own life. In your own life, yeah. But if you're that person that follows everybody else that's doing the same trends, the same... Right. Be the person you wish thing. you had growing up. Yeah. The, the the mentor, the role model you wish you had growing up. I agree. Be that. All your shortcomings, be the person that lifts people up through that. No, I feel it, man. So it's just stuff like that. But uh, that's like... That's, I don't know. I don't know. Can you really be your own superhero? I can be your hero, baby. <laughs> I can stand by you forever. forever. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? But uh, speaking of heroes, um, it's gonna be a good conversation. Good conversation. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, because we're like hard pivot. Forty two. Super <laughs> duper hard 40 pivot. Minutes. Yeah, we actually had a conversation earlier about. Why superhero movies suck or they're oversaturated? Oversaturated. But like what? Hero fatigue has finally kicked in. <sighs> and it's like, it, no more, please. But what next? Because we went through the storybook era. We did. You know what I'm saying? The, the novel movies and yep. stuff like that. Of we course, you, you still have like here and there like Dune. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We did. Blah, blah, blah. Never ending story. Right, you know, but I don't know. I, I'm I'm so tired. I don't care. Yeah, we did. I don't. Care. And then on top of that, everything is so woke and garbage. It's not even entertaining anymore. It's like, what political agenda are you trying to put into my? Hey, faith? you're talking down to me. If you don't like this, you're all of the above. Yes. Select one hate group. You're one of them. Yes. Because you don't like. My Insert movie. yourself in that in right. one said box. Because you don't like the movie. Yes. <laughs> Even though the movie's garbage, it's not because it's not, it's not because oh, the movie. Hey, let's say the movie's more focused on what they're trying to put out mm-hmm. and what they're what what story that they're trying to tell, and it's like, all right, I'm done. It's it's over. Like it's weird. It, I don't I don't care about Marvel anymore. But like, what's the next step in that, dude? Like you like every like when when did you start falling out? Of, of superhero movies like name one movie that where you were just like or a couple movies where you're just like eh, i don't give a fuck couple movies mm-hmm. um i would say the trend started in the mid 2010s charlie's angel remake those are charlie's angel remake yep with the chick from uh twilight oof mm. never heard of it that's dog yes um that's dog um, then you had Captain Marvel. Yeah, that was. It's not even part of my collection. That, that started the trend, and then that's different. Then they started race swapping. Yeah, they started race swapping. Then, then the then it became, I saved myself. I didn't need a guy to do it. And it just it just kept getting progressive. Yeah, it was kind of weird because it's like, so what happens to these characters now? Yeah, it, it's it's. Well, I still have the OGs here, so I'm not worried about it. Right. Um, but it, it just progressively got worse, and now the stories are 
are focused on um, political agendas. And it's like, I don't care anymore. I feel it. Because it literally went from you, 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 you took the comic book pages and put it in real life, and then now it's about... No, it's like a whole separate universe. Yeah, it the is. The reason why I'm tired of, of, of superhero movies is because now that they unlock the multiverse, it's just like... I'm still just... I'm waiting for Deadpool. Deadpool actually sticks to... They can just bullshit their way through anything. 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 But, like anything. I said, Deadpool hasn't failed me yet. And now we're getting Wolverine, so I ain't, I ain't complaining. Yeah, that's true. In the yellow right. costume. Right. So I really am not complaining. Yeah, Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Jackman. Hugh Jackman is... How old is that man? 55. Oh, no, he, he's still kicking. Yeah, he's still kicking. Oh, yeah. Because sure. Schwarzenegger was doing Terminator... At 46, 47? Yeah. In, nine, nine, in 84? 84, bro. To 92 was Judgment Day. And 03 was Rise of the Machine. And Rise of the Machine was 03. I'm surprised they waited that long between... James Cameron writes his stories. And he waits for the technology. That's why. But there was not that big. Okay, so Terminator 1 was 84? 84. Oh, and then Terminator 2 was 94. No, 92. 92. Yes. Because remember, it took six to seven years to make movies with the technology that they had currently. Now it takes three months and then uh, uh, six months. Or they eight. just render all that bitch. Yeah, six, six to eight months of editing and then three months of actual filming. So they'll say all their door. lines blah 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 all that mm -hmm. stuff like that and then they'll move on to that but no it went from it went from six to seven years to three years to two years to now three to five months i feel that nuts right they kind of like it, it it's like they pulled well no because they pulled the they pulled the men in black where one and two came out back to back can you believe the third movie came out what 2012 Yes, because 2002 was the second one. 1997 was the first one. That's crazy. Yeah, that's when... I remember watching that in yeah, theaters, but I don't know, that just felt recent, though. Yeah, because that's when filming started getting shorter and shorter and shorter, and they were able to utilize the technology that they had to film, make films faster and faster and faster, and now it's just that. easy to pump out movies. But because they pump them out so fast, they're garbage. You know why I think we hate superhero movies now? Why? There's no more practical effects. You're right. That's why I loved Hellboy. Right. There's no more practice. Because I just feel like I'm just watching. Because the way Gilmore Del Toro did it was it was all um, animatronics and um, right. practical effects. Same thing with uh, Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan, all his Batman right. films, they actually did it. They're like, we're going to pay this much. Warner Brothers going to pay me. We're going to flip this helicopter in the air and fucking do this shit. And, th and that's the thing, too, because once they start doing all that CGI rendering, bro, the movies get crazy expensive, man. Yeah. I mean, look at uh, Fat, uh, Fast and the, Fu the first Fast and the Furious to the 10th Fast and the Furious. Right. Bitches riding down dams while they explode and the car's not flipping. It's so dumb, bro. Is that's, that a thing? That's so that's dumb. A, that's a real thing. That's so dumb. That's a thing. That's so dumb. So the bridge is explode. The, 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 the whole water dam is exploding. His son is in the car. Yeah, he, the moment I saw them go to he's, space. He's in his... <laughs> he's in his muscle car. Oh, no, 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 no. The moment I saw when they went to the Arctic and the rock grabbed a fucking missile. And redirected it. And redirected it. <laughs> that was it. You what? That's crazy to you me. You what? You what? That's crazy to me. The car was traveling at like 190 miles an hour. And he was able he to. He grabs the missile and then throws it faster than the car is. <laughs> hey, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> no. No. Oh, uh, shit. I'm just saying, man. It's nuts. It's nuts. And then the thing that I expected them to do with my favorite <laughs> legacy characters... Like the Hulk. They just... that I think that's like one of the biggest... Downfalls. He was insults. So, like he just meant so much to the Marvel 2008, Universe. 2008. Amazing. Amazing. Right, that's crazy. They man. showed you the brute, ruthless, Cause they animalistic really, yeah. strength of oh, the Hulk. Man. Like this man was unstoppable. And then you jump to... Um, Endgame and Infinity Wars and he's there. Then you jump to She-Hulk and he's a bitch. 
But it's how they did it, Jeff. You see what I'm saying? Like they detossed her on him every single film. It's how is they Is that did even it. a word? I think I, I just made that know. up. But it's like I'm not saying I want him to be angry all the time. But that's what he But is. they minimized his entire experience as the Hulk. Like the battle, the mental battle he had to fight. With himself. With himself. Because it's like... Everything that he lost that came with it. Yes. What his potential was. You felt the toll. Right. The power he could tap into. And the only way you can... Because he's essentially a giant green monkey with emotions. I feel that. So his, but I feel like it's deeper than that. Well, his brief memory... In a sense, because he can't talk. So his right. brief memory of who he knows is what controls or fuels his emotions. Because he's ruled by his emotions. His rage makes him stronger. His calmness brings him back to normal. I mean, his just the way the, his protection of of others or who he wants to. I mean, it's just a lot of things. Like you, you see that, but it's like they diminished all that, and it just made him worse and worse and worse. Every film that he got. But it's over. like it's not even <laughs> just. I get what you're saying. It's just the storyline they took him down was weird as hell to me. Yeah. Because, like, in one point, you have, like, the invasion of these interdimensional beings in the first Avengers. Okay. Where it's like, I have an army. We have a Hulk. That's a statement. Yeah. That's a statement. Yeah. We have a Hulk. You see what I'm saying? Puny God. Yeah, the first, the first Avengers film. Right? Yeah. Puny God. Okay, he's a puny God. Yeah. Indestructible as fuck. The, like, when we saw the Hulk in the first movie, oh, he was fucking shit up. I don't know, bro. I don't know why they did that. It's just weird to me. And then, of course, they sprinkled references to, like, Planet Hulk. Yeah. And all that. And, and it was just like, he did all of this. He traveled the galaxy. They sent him away or whatever. And it was just like... It was sad. I don't know. I don't know why they did that. We should do a video called The Downfall of the Incredible Hulk. Because there's just so much. Like, there's so much lore in, into what the, the the Hulk can do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And of course, his counterparts. <laughs> Joe Fix-It. Scar. Um, Scar's his son. Uh, Scar's his son, yeah. yeah. Uh, Claw, which is Reverse Hulk. Yeah. Claw. Of course, you have the General Ross and the Red Hulk. Mm-hmm. Um, you just have so much, dude. So much they could have went into, dude. Because if we're talking about a multiverse and we're showing all these characters. fantastical characters and dimensions, why couldn't we expand on the Hulk? It would fit perfectly right in. No, I agree. It would fit perfectly uh, right into the story. You see what I'm saying? Or if you did like a spin-off series. I don't know, bro. That's weird as hell to me. Yeah, they just it just needs to end now. Like you keep like you and everybody else keeps you just come up with original stories because original stories are very amazing. Yeah, let's let's bring comics back to T V and Yeah, they have the technology now, why not? Right, do it? T V and games. Just just and focused stuff. on the good give me a good story. Just give me just give me just give me one. Just give, give me one. You do have one. It's called One Piece. Yes. That's why. Yeah, we got to go. Gotta one go piece that. of good fucking fiction. That's what that is, bro. God tier. One piece of God good tier. fiction. But uh, you have any final final thoughts? <laughs> okay, do you have any final thoughts? I sound like, I sound like <laughs> a, a mysterious man walking what into the, the West. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> You should have came in here with your IV bag. Do you have any suggestions? Huh? 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 Yeah, branches. No, sir, I do not have any suggestions. Right. Uh, or uh, I said what I said. How I said does he that. always know when we're ready to go? That's weird. It's weird. He takes a nap, and then he knows when we're ready to go. Good boy. I see your tail wagging, but that's you got nothing else for us. Nope. Yeah. No final words of wisdom? No, I just talk out my ass all over. Yeah. <laughs> Mysterious. <laughs> Go ahead, man. All right, guys. Thank you again for joining us at the Tabletop. If you want to catch and watch our ugly mugs on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're on Spotify, 
Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Deezer, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and now YouTube Music. We also have our YouTube channel, One Word, Tabletop Topics, our Triple T Clips channel, and our TikTok. So if you click on the links, it'll take you directly to the episodes. And of course, we have timestamps so you can navigate throughout. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and of course, leave us a comment. Again, guys, thank you again for joining us at the Tabletop. You have a good night, weekend, evening, and day, and we'll see you on Tuesday. See you, see you. Thank you.